So we meet again. Thank you for joining me, and I've been waiting for you. Today I have a story I want to tell you. A tale as old as time. And if this time isn't the right time for you, or if at any point this story seems too much, feel free to go away, and I'll always be here. You can always come back another day to finish the tale. So the story I'm about to tell is a story that's been around forever, and I've known it forever too. But somewhere along the way, somewhere along my life, along this path, I forgot it like the many of you have. And I'm here to tell you this story because I can't remember who told me it, but for some reason I feel like you are the original one to tell me it. So now I feel like it's only my job to tell this story back to you. If you trace everything back, you'll lead to one thing. If you take American history, if you take all the presidents, if you follow it all the way back, you follow the New World back to when the Europeans came here and keep following it back farther and farther and farther to where all humans came from, you'll come to one conclusion. If you take a telescope, and you zoom out all the way, the most powerful telescope, and you can see everything out there, it will be very similar to if you could take the smallest microscope and zoom in as far as you can and see everything that's on a microscopic level. It's interesting. Most of the things I tell you are things you're already going to be, you're already going to know. But it's like what I said before. It's things you know, but it's you don't know how you already know these things. And it's because we are a species with amnesia. Sometimes we forget where we truly came from. What I'm here to present to you today is a way of enlightenment. A way for spiritual awakening. A way so you can manifest what you want in your life. And it all begins with accepting the power of three and understanding the natural law of three. And how, because three exists, everything else exists. Now let me take you on this journey. Before we were who we consider ourselves today, before we had these vessels and these bodies, we were all very similar, we were all pure, we were all innocent, and we were all the same. You must understand, we all came from the same place. We all come from the original source. If you take all the evolution, if you take it all the way back, if you take all the races, all the cultures, all the way back, if you take all the languages back to the original language, the original form of communication, you go all the way back to the first amphibious creature that stepped foot on land. We all loop back to the same thing. We all come from the same origin. There is an unspoken thing that exists in this world, and that is the truth. There is something more powerful than anything else in the world. There is something that can liberate the strongest of men, that can set anyone free. The thing no one can hide from at the end of the day because it always comes and gets everyone. And that thing, the thing that we all know is the truth. Now no matter what you consider, what you describe it, it is the truth. It is the one. He thinks, therefore he is. It is because it is. When you have one, you have everything and you have nothing to. One is truly indescribable. They say one is the loneliest number. It's because one isn't even a number at that point. When there's only one, it just is. Numbers don't exist when there's only one number. When it's just one, it doesn't matter if we call it one or we call it zero. If we call it infinity or we call it beyond. The little word of it doesn't matter when there's only one thing. It's just a placeholder. It's just there to represent something greater than what it really is. 
it is just there. This is nihilism. This is the root of all religion. This is the root of all men. This is the root of everything. You stare at the void long enough, it starts staring back at you. And all that left is, all it can really say is, it is here, you know? You look for a meaning in life, and you get whatever you go out looking for. It's like, the truth is the truth. The one is everything, but it's nothing, too. It's all the man, all the matter, but all the anti-matter, too. One is holiness. One is pure. One is innocent. One is beyond world. We only say truth because that's what we use to describe it, but it's before everything. It's the original thing. One is beyond powerful, but it's only one aspect of the law of three, and it's only, depends on the way you look at it, but it's either the first or the last step of the law of three. The second step is two. When two things exist, when the one becomes two, this can exist when, as a child, like I said before, you're pure, you're innocent. You also know all the answers in the world. When you are just a baby, everything is attracted to you, and you have all the answers for everything around you. You make everything around you better, and you make it happier, and you make love in this world. And that's what number two is all about. That's the second thing, that's balance, that's harmony, that's love, yin and yang, push and pull, give and take, life and death, black and white, night and day. You see where this is going? It's all about comparing and contrasting two things. That's what two is, the beginning and the end, the space and the time. Now, the reason I brought up being a baby is because this is where the whole story began. Now, when you were younger, you knew everything. You had all the problems. You had all the answers to all the problems because all the problems in the world were right there in front of you. And it was way more simpler and way more easier to solve all those problems. And everything was simple and this easy solution was you. You were actually part of the solution. You just being there were part of the solution. You also notice it takes two to love. So you can have one. It, it always takes two to equal one. You need the two people to make new life. And the older you get, you realize that is the meaning of life. Is to create this new life. I'm not saying these powers of three is the meaning of life. I'm saying... These laws of three, this power of three is what's going to set you forward in life and set you free. So then you can see other signs and understand and be awakened. Let's get back to the two. What I was saying before, you knew all the answers, so what happened? You just played a game and you, you played it too close to the edge. We, we all do it. We all... What I, the analogy I use is... Using a thread on your finger and wrapping it around and watching your finger turn purple. And you don't even understand what you're doing to yourself. But it's like you're separating and breaking into two different things, you know. It's like you're losing touch. You're forgetting all the things you originally known when you were in the womb. When you were the source, you know. Before you even came into the squad, you know. When you were part of the one. When you separate from being part of everything and you find what it means to be you you know you separate into two there is always a second side that lives inside of us there's two aspects of you and we'll get into that in the later podcast too but just understanding that you didn't mean to do this to yourself but over time you just played with the idea and then you lost the attachment to the truth you lost all the answers but that's okay that's part of the path that's what we all take along the way to eventually get to the three to grow up into this world another thing about the babies and the two what's important about this is 
two, when you have two things, two numbers, this is where binary gets into play, and this is where programming comes into play. Once you come out of the womb, once you enter this world, it's all about programming, and what you take on, and what you learn from the other people you see, and if you study enough, or you look enough into nature and nurture, you'll understand that so much of who you are later in life is your childhood. It's all about the programming from a young age. And this is all the ones and the zeros, the yin and the yang, the harmony, the play of two things, the push and pull, you know? The balance, the contrast, and the comparison. This is what love is. There's also a powerful thing here where it's like once you bulk, once you bulk that feeling, once you bulk off into two things and you lost touch of that finger, you lost touch of what you used to have, it's like you can always go back to this place. You can always go back and find your innocence, find yourself as a baby again. And when we were babies, we knew everything and we were the most gentleman and the most ladylike and the most respectful. So the way we are... We're always still there for each other. And what I'm saying it is I'm saying it like there's two. Because you continue on this path. But that pure, that innocence, what you are, the programming, that will always be there. And you can always go back to that. And eventually, part of this process of enlightenment, of awakening, about manifesting what you want. Of one day you do have to go back. And you have to see yourself as that pure innocence and accept who you became since then. And then what do you do? You forgive yourself. You forgive yourself for everything you've done up to this point. Because you realize love, love is the most important. You know, you made mistakes, but the baby you loves you so much because the baby you knew all the answers the baby version of you was pure innocent and true because it was just the truth you 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 came from the truth and truly you were supposed to be here we were all supposed to be here or you wouldn't be it's interesting when you come back and you do forgive yourself you'll realize something else too you'll realize we all been through this path like I said before, we all at that thread around our finger too tight eventually. We were just playing around, you know. We knew the harm it could cause, but it was just fun. But then one day, we actually lost the attachment. But we didn't think it was that big of a deal because it was so simple for us. We knew all the answers. We always thought, yeah, we can just come back. We can go back to that place. But then over time, it gets harder and harder, and you forget and that's why it feels like we are a species with amnesia. We forget the truth. We become these adults. We become all the programming builds up and then all the experience in life. And you become who you are. But every once in a while you have to go back to you as the innocent. You know, accept that like you used to love everyone and you accepted everyone. And this is part of it once you understand we all went through this process we all made the mistakes we all made the sins we should all go back and forgive when you do go back and forgive you forgive so much more you forgive everyone for everything because you accept everyone is a lot like you and well a lot alike you understand that too so that is step two that's all about the body about the harmony about the yin and yang, about the balance of two things, and understanding that, yes, pure innocence, that is good, that's the light shit, you know, that's what you used to be, but yeah, you can go forth, you can do what you want, you know, the dark side exists too, and a lot of people say, oh, if God exists, or, yeah, if God exists, if there's a bigger plan, if, if the universe really had something at play, like, what, why would that be evil? Wouldn't that only be good? And I'm like, no, because love exists. And we love everyone and we accept everyone. And it's hard, it's painful, but it's like, you have to. Because through love, through number two, we can create number three. And number three is the final law. Or is it the first law? It just depends on the way you see things. Because for us, this is the law that we are at today. This is where we live 
now. This is when you leave the binary, when all the programming is done, and you wake up one day, and you become conscious. You wake up one day in your body, and everything falls into line. This is another thing of the three. The physical, the mental, it's there the whole time. That's part of the programming. That's part of the trust. That's part of the love. That's just part of the process. It is because it is, you know? The physical, the body, that's there. It's growing the whole time. But when the conscious comes into play, that's when the beauty comes. That's when you get the thought element. That's when you get the spiritual. The physical, the mental, the spiritual. The mind, the body, the soul. Very interesting. Also, if you look at Tesla, he sees things in threes too. Vibration, frequency, and energy. They're all linked. They're all similar. It's all They all use each other. And when we get to three, we realize why everything is so powerful and why the law of three exists. Because when we get to three, everything else can branch out. Three is freedom. Number three is the ability to understand because the truth is what it is we're able to love and accept and under and love can exist in this world and love has to exist love is the next step truth is the most righteous truth is the most powerful doesn't matter how much you love if certain things the truth will find the way the truth will Fix this world. The truth is the key. But it's like love. Love. You need the love next. And then when everything. When there's love everywhere. And when everything can be love. You can accept everything. Then you can have the third one. Then freedom comes into play. Three is very powerful. Now I'm using three. Because it's the law of three. Three things exist. It's not the actual number of three. It's the idea of a third thing coming into play and having now is not a balance of two things. Now it's not a compare and a contrast. Now it's a system. It's a spectrum. Three, you see threes in colors. Three can create six, can create nine, can create 18, then 15 or 27 or 36. Three is very powerful. You get three colors, and then you mix two of the colors. You mix the other two, then you mix the other two. Now what? You got three new ones. You keep doing that forever and ever. Three is just a good building block because it shows things exist now. When you only have two, you only have two sides. You only have the beginning and the end. Once you get to three, you can finally fill it in. You have everything in between. Or maybe you just have one point in between. But all you need is that one point for it to become continuous. It's not two different sides. It's not one or the other. It's not everything either. It's continuous. It's a flow. And that's what freedom is. We flow with freedom. We explore. We become better versions of ourselves. We become the best versions of ourselves. We build with each other. And we become better versions of each other. Because freedom exists. We're able to. Take on different roles. And have different archetypes. And different. Versions of man. Because freedom. If freedom didn't exist. We would all be the same. We would all face conformity. Truth is pure, truth is righteous, but freedom exists so we're all not one. We're all not the same. We can take the different paths. As long as all the different paths, the root of it or where we end up with that eventually is love. Because love will set us free. Love will set everyone else free. And when you have love, all that's left is truth. Be honest, be truthful, be righteous. Follow the truth, set the truth. Everything else will fall in love fall in line before we leave three and explore this idea a little more you have the space and the time too and you need the third to play everything else you have space you have time everything else you have day and you have night now you need everything else you know things come in two but then when three comes it's like now you're able to have a spectrum you're able to have play a little game with it like rock paper and scissors instead of just heads and tails 
the options end up more endless. And once you have the three, you can build four, five, six, seven, eight, and eventually even nine. You can build upon three so much more. One, when there's only one thing, there's not much to build upon. It's all just there. And when you have two things, it's either one or the other. It doesn't have the middle ground like the three does. The three has the gray area in the middle to truly keep everything at balance. Just in case one day, the yin overpowers the yang. Then number three can come in line. Number three is the gray area that evens out and adds a little more yang to balance the yin. Just to keep everything at play. But then if things switch, the gray area can switch and turn the other side. That's just the fluidness of freedom. Freedom isn't so defined. Freedom will set you free. Living in America and having the values I have, I understand we are blessed to start with number three. We are born in a country where we already have our freedom. All we have to do next is accept that love is the next step. Love is the next most powerful thing next to freedom. Love, first you need freedom to truly have love or to have the most purest, righteous kind of love, to have the love that you truly want and the love that you know you and the person you love deserve, you have to be free. There's different ways to be free too. You could physically be free, which lucky enough in America, we are physically free unless you have some horrible conditions holding you back. But then the next step is to mentally set yourself free. This is can be easier for some people and harder for other people. It just depends on all the stuff you have going on in your head. All the and a lot of it it's like follow the truth, be a little righteous. It's hard, but you must set your mind free. And that is part of the key, setting your mind free. You can't just have your body free, your mind has to be free. The last one, the one many people forget, is setting your spirit free and knowing what you really want in this life and what you deserve in this life. Knowing who you want to be, what kind of person you want to be. Once you have these three things, you truly set yourself free. Let go of all worldly attachments and be free. Feel the freedom. It feels beyond good. Once you have the freedom, like I said, you can forgive, you can accept, you can love and build. And that's how you build a family on love. And that's how you build everything in this world has to begin with love. Because if it doesn't come from a place of love, then it doesn't have as much value to it. Love is so powerful in this world. Then truth. Truth is the final thing. Truth is the thing no one can hide from. Truth is the thing that will set you free. Whether you like it or not, the judgment day, no matter how you see it, like, eventually you got to go and see, like, all the things you've done and set. That's the truth. Not always pretty. You should kind of be scared of the truth at some times. But it's like, that's the pureness of the truth. That's the power of the truth. And once you go back, and this is the species with amnesia, it takes baby steps to awaken. It takes a process. But once you get all the way back to the truth, and you see everything you need to see, the gates open up and you see the truth, and it's just so obvious from there on. And it makes you want to walk a different path after that point on. I want to keep doing these podcasts and I want to talk more. There's power in this 369. You'll notice this with sacred geometry. You'll notice this with the word, with the tree of life, with creativity and creating life. 369 is very powerful things and it's just, it is the step, one of the f- huge first step to spiritual awakening, enlightenment, manifest destiny, just understanding who we are, waking up, we are 
a species with amnesia. We forgot a long time a lot of stuff. But it's like all the answers are inside yourself. It's like the world is set up for this way. You always had all the things inside of yourself, all the answers. That all your legacy before you, all the people that came before you, they made sure. And the world itself, the universe works in mysterious ways. It, everything you need, you already have. I hope you enjoyed my story. I hope you could take something from it. I hope when you continue going out in the world, you can see the patterns of three and you can see the power of three. See the triangle and understand the power. Notice in this country... The three branches of government are supposed to work so they all keep everything in checks and balances, all keep everything at play. Who knows if that's still working perfectly today. But the same with Christianity too. You'll notice these three things, that's where they originally came from. And they actually came from something way before Christianity too. That's what I was talking about. All of this comes from ancient before anything the truth is the truth and i want to keep exploring that on this podcast and i want to open it up to other people and i'm happy enough to live in a country where i'm free and i think other people happy enough to live in this country too and if they don't they should have the opportunity to at least get on my podcast if this is the only podcast in the world that accepts them and be able to talk about whatever they want Because here I love everyone and I accept everyone and we can have an open conversation about anything. And I'm not going to back down. We can sit and we can talk and talk and talk and we'll figure it out and we'll get to the truth. Because at the end of the day, it's like, we're all free. If we are free, we're lucky to be free. And those people aren't free. We should be on a job to free everyone. Because until you get free, you can't take this path. And then the people that are free, we should show them love. And we should show them how much we love them and how we forgive them for whatever. And it's like, we just want them to walk this righteous path. We don't want to force nothing down that throat. But it's like, I would love to at least have the opportunity to lead you to the water. And that water is the truth. And then once we get there, I'll sit you down and let's hope. We can drink some water together because I think if everyone can sit down and have a meal, have a drink together, have a smoke together, whatever you want to do together, it'll make the world a lot better place to sit down and have that talk and figure things out. Because we're all a lot more alike than we're different because we're all the same. We all came from the same source, the original thing. We're all on the same path. On a mission to seek the truth thank you all for listening i appreciate you so much and i hope you all go out to manifest your own perfect lives and understand the world works in mysterious ways so sometimes you get what you need and not what you want sometimes it just comes in mysterious ways but you'll see the signs when they start showing up i hope you all have an enlightened future Until next time, thank you for stopping by.